What? What's going on? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst sitcoms ever. We could get people to do or feel however we wanted and then rule the world! Um, yeah. For this list, we're looking at situation comedies with distasteful or dull situations and or generally unfunny comedy. Have you seen any of these terrible sitcoms? Let us know in the comments. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Number 20, Work It. Work It was an awful sitcom that ran for two episodes back in 2012. The show featured two guys who, because of the awful economy, had to dress like women in order to get a job. But just one more thing I have to say. It's me. It's Lee. Me? Yeah. This is what I had to do to get a job. Okay, my eyes are up here. <laughs> Given how women have historically been treated with less respect than men in the workforce, the premise of the show is beyond insulting. But also, as a pure situation comedy, the show was pretty much completely lacking in the comedy department as well. How'd it go? I blew it. Why didn't you tell me she was so hot? My AIDS bandage was holding on for dear life. <laughs> Just because bosom buddies kind of worked back in the early 80s doesn't mean men dressed as women is going to work every time. As one critic wrote, Work It was, quote, witless, tasteless, poorly acted, abominably written, clumsily directed, hideously lit, and badly costumed. Number 19, Small Wonder. Ted Lawson is an engineer who invents a voice input child identicant robot he calls Vicky. Say hello to my family. Hello to my family. <laughs> Ted, are you putting us on? That's a real kid, right? No, no, it's a robot! That's the situation. The comedy part, or at least what passed for comedy, came by way of the fact that Ted brought Vicky home to live with his family and they presented her to the world as their newly adopted human daughter. Despite the lackluster jokes and Vicky's annoyingly generic robot voice, we should note that the show was actually pretty popular at the time and ran for four seasons. However, that popularity should not be confused with quality. Yeah, give it a chance. Tonight, I'm making cabbage a la mustard. I'd rather eat my golf shoes a la mustard. <laughs> As the BBC wrote, quote, Small Wonder is widely considered one of the worst low-budget sitcoms of all time. Number 18, Are We There Yet? Both the 2005 Are We There Yet movie and the similarly titled television show that came out five years later were pretty successful. Suzanne! Terrence is threatening to kill me again. Terrence, don't kill my husband. That's one. That's one. That's one what? That's one thing right now. The movie grossed over $97 million on a $32 million budget, and the series ended up running for three seasons and 100 episodes on TBS. They also both had something else in common. They weren't very good. We like Terry Crews, but even his big muscles couldn't lift the sitcom beyond the generic family comedy it was. You see what I'm dealing with, Donna? I see what you're dealing with. It left us asking ourselves, is it funny yet? And more often than not, the answer was no. Number 17, Kath and Kim. To our Australian viewers, before you jump angrily into the comments section, let us be clear that we are not talking about the very funny hit sitcom that aired in your country from 2002 to 2007. What? Don't be a Fool, Kim. You're not as young as you used to be. You've got a chooky neck. What? And crow's feet. What do you mean, chooky Kim? I'm not criticising you, Mum. I'm just saying you look bad. We are talking about the poorly written and conceived American version of Kath and Kim that the San Francisco Chronicle called, quote, a contender for worst remake ever. Kim, I really like it. You're very serious and businesslike on the top with a scarf, and then you stand up from the news desk and bang! Keep some guessing, right? And while a decent-sized audience showed up for the series premiere, it didn't take long for them to realize the show sucked. By the third episode, the audience was already one-third smaller. Number 16, Talia in the Kitchen. A 14-year-old girl, a family restaurant, a passion for cooking, and magical spices all came together to create the meal that was 40 episodes of Talia in the Kitchen on Nickelodeon in 2015. Wow. Yeah. That's... That's huge. I know. But you can't tell anyone, though. Don't worry. I won't. And while 40 episodes might sound like a lot, it should be noted that it was just one season. 
after which the series was canceled due to low ratings and less than stellar critic reviews. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Oh, you see? I told you. Now we waste the time. On IMDb, the teen telenovela comedy holds a rather paltry 3.3 rating out of 10, with one review using the right to the point headline, quote, God awful. Number 15, Veronica's Closet. When Veronica's Closet made its debut in 1997, Variety said in their tepid review of the show that it had potential. That is a lousy thing to say. <laughs> well, it's true. Maybe. Well, all we can say to that is it definitely didn't live up to whatever potential the magazine saw in it after that pilot episode. Being sandwiched between Seinfeld and ER on must-see TV Thursday nights for two seasons made the show a top 10 hit. But once NBC moved it to a new night, season three saw a 50% audience drop. And that was that for Veronica's Closet. <laughs> well, then there you go. <laughs> Number 14, Baby Bob. A talking baby, how funny is that? Well, in commercials it works, but in sitcom form, it's not funny at all. Well, at least that was the case for Bob the Talking Baby, who got his start in ads for freeinternet.com in 2000. The character's popularity led TV execs to build a show around him. And in 2002, the world got Baby Bob. Mommy, don't be silly. Cows don't talk, they just moo. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and nine episodes later, they lost Baby Bob. Although, all one had to do was watch the first five minutes of the first episode to know it wasn't gonna last. How can you be so calm about this? I'm not. I've just had time to get used to it. We're not being overdramatic when we say it's truly painful to watch. After the end of the show, Bob went back to commercials. This time for Quiznos. Number 13, That 80s Show. We have to admit that a spin-off of that 70s show that takes place in the 1980s with some of the same characters and storylines sounds like it would be awesome. How do you get it to stand up? <laughs> How do you get it to stand up? Unfortunately, we'll never know because that isn't what that 80s show was. Instead, it was a brand new show that took place in the 80s with brand new characters and storylines. And while much of the team behind that 70s show was also at the helm of the 80s one, whatever magic they sprinkled on the former was all used up when they went to make the latter. Can you just be a little careful about who you pick? Why? Oh, because if it doesn't work out, I'll never hear the end of it. The 80s coined the use of the word bad to mean good. But when it comes to that 80s show, bad just means bad. Number 12, Harry and the Hendersons. Based on the moderately successful 1987 film of the same name, the Harry and the Hendersons TV show ran for 72 episodes over three seasons. Well, I can't let anybody know he's here. Before you know it, he'll be, he'll be in a cage, he'll be tested and gawked at, he'll have his blood drawn and his brains wired. But while the series was also somewhat successful, do you know what it wasn't? Any good. It was as if the creators figured that a Bigfoot living with a family was funny enough that they didn't need to put any effort into creating interesting characters or writing good jokes. Oh, Harry, I don't know if you were ever a teenager, but you can't take anything they say personally. They're very emotional. I am not emotional! <laughs> See? And to be blunt, they were wrong. Even the canned laughter of the laugh track could barely muster up any enthusiasm for what passed as humor on the show. Number 11, Marvin Marvin. My force field is rather powerful, is it not, Dad Bob? Since a sitcom for YouTube veteran Lucas Cruikshank didn't work the first time, Nickelodeon decided to try again. And you can barely tell I'm different. This time, they tried their hand at a Mork and Mindy ripoff where Lucas plays Marvin, an alien taken in by a human family who tries to fit in disguised as a teenager. Except he makes Invader Zim look subtle. Can't get rid of me that easily. There's probably a deeper meaning of how you shouldn't be afraid to be yourself, but said moral, along with the supporting cast, are drowned out by Marvin's quirky overacting and heavy reliance on gross-out humor. Thankfully, both the series and Lucas's time at the network had run out, burying this mess for good. <sighs> Number 10, I hate my teenage daughter. What's going on? Oh my God, who's pregnant? Single mothers Nikki and Annie have inadvertently turned their teenage daughters into their worst nightmare, a pair of spoiled popular monsters. A domestic satire like this sounds good on paper, 
but ultimately flops in execution. The characters are unbelievable and unsympathetic, even the ones we're supposed to sympathize with, and it's difficult to truly get invested in any of them. You told me this started two hours ago. It's what I do. The writing is completely toothless, with the premise feeling more like a setup for feeble punchlines. Fortunately, plummeting ratings finally ended the show, and we all learned a valuable lesson. Don't be Annie or Nikki and discipline your children. But it's really not that bad. <laughs> Number nine, Homeboys in Outer Space. I knew I should have listened to my horoscope. It said I'm going to die. A sci-fi parody sitcom can be hilarious if done right. If only UPN knew that when they greenlit this. Flex and Daryl Bell star as the fun-loving Tiberius and the straight-laced Morris, two 23rd century astronauts traveling through the cosmos in their winged car. The series boasts some memorable guest star appearances, but not so much humor, mostly relying on rather forced sci-fi references and racial stereotyping. You, me, and a nuclear warhead. A menage boom! <laughs> Following a long line of low ratings and criticism, including protests from the NAACP, the show was canceled and rightfully forgotten in the black void of space. But I must warn you ladies, I don't perform well under pressure. <laughs> Number eight, Two Broke Girls. Is that annoying? <laughs> Is that obnoxious and rude? <laughs> Have you ever wondered how something so promising could go so wrong? Well, you won't keep wondering for long once you watched Two Broke Girls. As the title suggests, the series follows two women from different backgrounds, one from a working class family and the other from a defamed rich family, working together as waitresses to help finance their dream job. I'm a business genius and I will always land on my feet. Oh, really? Because today you kind of landed on your front. Unfortunately, any potential the series had was quickly swept away in the final product all thanks to a combination of humorless and obvious jokes, rather tasteless racist stereotypes, and a heavy reliance on sexual humor. You can't tell an Asian he made a mistake. He'll go in the back and throw himself on a sword. After a six-year run, CBS finally put it to rest, and television feels much richer without it. We really need these jobs. Number seven, Mulaney. They're like, does that work? I'm like, it didn't not work. <laughs> It's not uncommon for stand-up comedians to land their own sitcoms as fictional versions of themselves. While some thrive like Seinfeld, others like Mulaney, not so much. To better explain, comedian John Mulaney portrays himself being hired to do work for a comic legend while trying to make time for his roommates, a wound-up trainer and a fellow stand-up comic. There's no such thing as ghosts. <laughs> hey, Andre. Hey, Mulaney. What ultimately dooms this sitcom is how dated it all feels. It follows a similar formula to 90s sitcoms and comes off as a Seinfeld ripoff. With nothing new to offer, you'd be better off like Motif and binge watching Friends instead of one episode of this mediocre program. Oh, I remember these faces on TV. I always thought it was a news. Number six, Dog with a Blog. No, wait, I didn't get to that part of my blog yet. I'll do that after my new product review. In recent years, Disney's had a reputation for producing horrible teen and tween sitcoms, and this is just one example. This blight of a series follows three step-siblings adjusting to life as a new family and living with a talking dog named Stan who runs his own blog, because of course he does. It makes me so mad. I just want to... Oh, I want to... <laughs> While there is a heartwarming feeling with the dog bringing the family closer together, the sentiments feel cheesier than intended, especially when mixed with the hokey acting, unimaginative writing, annoying characters, and generous amount of cliched jokes. And in the story, a bad, bad thing happens. And I'm talking butt scooting on hot asphalt bad. As you probably guessed, Disney screwed the pooch with this show. Pun intended. But at least it was given a fitting ending. Did Stan just talk? Uh, no. I mean, woof. <laughs> Number five, Joey. Change can be good. Oh, it's easy for you to say. There's a lesson to be learned about giving a beloved TV character their own spinoff. Make sure they can pull off the leading man. After the finale of Friends, our favorite dim-witted ladies' man, Joey Tribbiani, moved on to Los Angeles to focus on his acting career. Longtime Friends fans loved Joey and his chemistry with the rest of the gang, but now he's on his own and down on his luck, making the experience feel empty. I totally lost it. 
I'm never gonna get this. While the premiere had successful ratings, it was all downhill from there. And trying to compete with American Idol didn't help either. The series concluded after two seasons, but Matt LeBlanc is not out of the sitcom game yet. Ask your mother. Not now. Do it later when I'm not around. Love you, Daddy. See? Katie thinks I'm doing great already. Number four, Cavemen. The Caveman Geico commercials are truly some of the smartest and funniest television commercials of all time. It's so easy to use Geico.com, a caveman could do it. What? <laughs> oh, no, I, not cool. I did not no. know you were there. Yes. I could, no, I could Unfortunately for all those involved with the Caveman television show, based on those commercial characters, the series is not remembered as fondly. While there might have been a few moments of actual wit and humor, the attempt to translate the ads to longer form storytelling was pretty much an abject failure. Really? That's Nick, he's Joel's best friend. Oh my God. No, he's all right, a little pushy. I'm standing right here. The Chicago Tribune even called it one of the 25 worst TV shows ever. Not just sitcoms, but shows. Turns out that making a quality sitcom is so hard, even a caveman can't do it. Yeah, I'm done. Are you serious? Number three, Fred the Show. Yeah, you're right, this one's terrible. Be careful of what you adapt to TV from the internet. It could be something great and hilarious, or it could be Fred the Show. What's wrong? <laughs> the door won't open. It must have walked behind us. That's right, someone over at Nickelodeon greenlit three TV movies and a sitcom for Lucas Cruikshank's character slash YouTube sensation, Fred Figglehorn. Not unlike the web videos, the series follows Fred's misadventures while he talks to us and shrieks at us. Wow, you look so cool! You can't make me wear this, Figglehorn. His annoying behavior and aggravating voice wore thin on critics' nerves, and ratings plummeted until Fred was finally put to rest after one season. Thankfully, after this and Marvin Marvin, Lucas cut ties with Nickelodeon and retired the Fred character and we couldn't be happier. I've decided a change in scenery is definitely necessary. Number two, my mother the car. Hello, Davey. Oh, mother. The series follows attorney David Crabtree as he buys a 1928 Porter that ends up being the reincarnation of his departed mother. David, it's very sweet of you to put a lock on the door, but I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Spoken like a true mother. For the rest of the series, David tries to protect his mother from a shifty car collector fresh out of a silent film. There have been plenty of gimmicky sitcoms over the years, but this one takes the cake. The concept is ridiculous, the characters are unrelatable, and the whole thing didn't stand a chance with the critics. Luckily, the crew moved on to more acclaimed projects, but it's hard to forget something this unreal. If that's what my son wants, that's, that's fine, fine with me. With me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Heil Honey, I'm Home Heil Honey, me! What did I do now? Britain has boasted its fair share of vulgar comedies but this was just in poor taste. The premise for this disaster is basically The Honeymooners meets The Third Reich, Adolf Hitler and Ava Braun as a typical sitcom couple with dull Jewish neighbors. Hey, hi, Adolf. <laughs> they got the car? What are you running a little late? It's not a problem, I'll pay for the gasoline. Obviously a controversial topic, the series was designed as a spoof of the idea that anything and everything could be a sitcom even having the German characters speak with Brooklyn accents. Ava, babe, please. I'm the Fuhrer. <laughs> I'm a busy man. I can't just walk off the job at five o'clock. Even with the corny jokes and cliched sitcom characters, you just can't overlook Hitler being the protagonist. Thus, the series was pulled after one pilot episode. It's for the best anyway, as there are far better ways to parody the Nazi leader. I'll myself raise your hand. There's no greater dictator in the land. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.